Good morning, everybody. Apologize for my voice is a little raspy. I woke up this morning with a little bit of a cold, but um, I'm gonna go back, guys. This is like the beginning of end of my PowerPoint. It's a little bit of a spoiler. Don't look right now. But okay, so today I'd like to talk about music, and I'd like to start off with a question. How many of you here have listened to music, heard music in the past couple of days? Raise of hands. And I hopefully, and it is everybody. And so it is everybody. And so I'd like to start off with this statement: Music is everywhere. Where do we see or hear music? You might listen to music in the radio when we're driving to feel a little less lonely when we're driving by ourselves. That's what I do. <laughs> might be you listening to music when we're shopping in a grocery store, at a department store. That music will get you in the mood to buy some food, some new stuff. Sad music might be playing a commercial that makes you want to donate to those poor puppies. Or maybe just get you in the mood to buy that new cool product. Or you just might listen to your music to yourself on a bus when you're home alone, just to entertain yourself. And so it really stands that music is everywhere. But we can't just look at a blanket statement. We've got to examine why music is everywhere. And so I have an answer to this question. And my answer is that music transcends barriers. This sounds very tacky. This sounds very cliche. You know, something a middle school or elementary school music teacher might say, you know. Music's so great, it transcends barriers. But I like to prove that it actually does. So let's look at the first barrier, language. If you're talking to somebody from a different country, they speak a different language, it might be very difficult for you to communicate with that person. That's a barrier that exists within us that can prevent communication. But now I like to point to this. Despacito by Luis Fonsi. Now, I know this music or song has been become kind of a joke at this point. But it is obvious that this video with 5.7 billion views is a massively popular video. In fact, one of the most viewed mu um, music videos or videos in general on YouTube. Arguably one of the most popular songs of last year. And so one asks ourselves, why? Why does, is this music or this song so popular? This song is in Spanish. Many of us here, including myself, I don't know anything about Spanish. Uh, I can't count really at all, actually. But uh, the point stands that many of the people who listen to this music can't even understand the lyrics. So why do we still enjoy this song? Well, it's because music doesn't care about what language it is. It's something that's able to transcend beyond the barriers of language. What about another barrier? Time. You can't talk to somebody that was in the past. But you are able to um, enjoy their work, see their perspectives through them. And music is one of them. This song, Africa by Toto, um, this is one of my favorite songs ever, if you guys know. Um, this song was made in 1982. Now, I see some adults in the audience, but many of us young guys here, young people here, um, we were not alive when this song was around. But we, we heard this song before. It's on the radio all over the place. And we love it. And so time isn't a barrier that exists within music. It can be appreciated any time. Or when's the last time you listened to a classical song? You know, or maybe even gone to a classical concert. People who made these songs, composers like Mozart, um, Vivaldi, they are long gone. You can't talk to them, but you can still appreciate their work despite centuries having passed. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a bit, my throat's not doing great today. <clears throat> so, today I'd like to examine the power of music, why it's such a powerful thing. And so I'd like to shift my focus to this guy over here. This is my trusty violin. Now, I'm a student, but I also like to think of myself as a musician, a bit of an entertainer. And so the, um, this violin over here is my tool, my trade. I use this guy to make the music I do. And so today I'd like to examine how music has changed, and I'll just be using the violin to demonstrate how it has changed. And that segues into our topic of today's TEDx event, the, per pow uh, the power perspective. Now today I'm not generally focusing on myself. I'm focusing on how perspectives throughout history have changed how music sounds. And so I'll be exploring that through my violin. So the first era I like to examine of music or genre is the classical era. The classical era being from 1730 to um, 1820, and for you history buffs, um, that start of Revolutionary War was 1775. So it was a little before the creation of the United States and then a little afterwards. Now, the classical era is, if you want to talk about music, you really can't 
go without talking about the classical era. But there's so many genres of music that I can't really narrow down to specific, or I can't really talk about music and I can't talk about all of the genres. So I'm gonna have to narrow down to a couple, and so I decided to focus on a couple of my favorites. And so starting with classic, I like to play a piece from this era. And um, I'm hoping you might, might like, recognize this one. So, by a show of hands, how many people of you guys recognize this piece? It's very famous. It's Eine Kleine Nacht music, or translated from German into English, A Little Night Music by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. So how would you characterize this piece here that I just played? You might say it sounds formal, very elegant. But why does it sound this way? Well, the answer to that is to provide a little bit of the historical perspective into music during this time. Music was played for the nobles, the kings, the rich, would hire composers and musicians to compose music for them and to play for them. This is a picture of young Mozart being the prodigy he is, playing for an audience of nobles. Music was not accessible to the common people. But, but that didn't stay this way because right here, everybody here, we can enjoy music. But then, times change and shift into the jazz area, era during the early 20th century. So I'd like to now play a little piece of jazz. So that song was called Rhythm For You and was composed by, um, during the late 1960s, I believe, but it's still a form of jazz. And so you might notice that this sounds way different from the classic piece I just performed earlier. But then we gotta go back and question, why does it sound this way? Well, the, most big, the biggest pointer to this is during the earliest 20th century, there was a movement called the Harlem Renaissance. African American people, despite the oppression they faced, stood up for themselves through um, mediums such as art, such as poetry and music, and jazz was one of them. It was an expression of their freedom, their power they had. So you might notice that that translates into the music genre um, jazz, how it sounds more free-flowing, and so it's an expression of how people perceived their freedom and their power. And then times changed into the late 70s with um, classical rock, or back then known as rock and roll, developing as a genre. And so um, one of my favorite rock groups, Cash, um, Led Zeppelin, performed Cashmere. And it starts like this, and so I want to see what you guys, how you guys might see how the music has changed. So you might notice that the tone of this music has changed again, this time more rebellious, more expressive. And so this comes with the hippie movement, which was um, founded roughly during the 60s, during the 70s. It was during a time, if you think about the 70s, you might notice how people dressed very bright clothes. They were very expressive of themselves. It's very different from the common dress back then of um, gray suits and black suits. 
people became more nonconformist. They were able to express themselves. And so societal change led to a change in how music sounds. And interestingly enough, Led Zeppelin took influence from blues, a genre of jazz. And so you might notice that genres of music um, build upon music of the previous eras. It's not something new that comes up, but a change of the previous era. So now I'd like to move on to the next era of hip hop or pop music. This song, Take On Me. Another one of my favorite songs. And so I want to see how that sounds and different from our previous song. So you might notice that the melody is more upbeat, the tempo more also upbeat. It's very light and very optimistic. And so the lyrics during the pop era heavily focused on um, simple, simple, um, um, simple topics such as love and romance. Um, so why did it sound like this? Well, during the 80s, especially in the United States where music has the most influence, um, people perceived a lot more peace than the previous eras. There was little. There's less global conflict, and so people felt a little bit more at ease, and that shows through how their music was developed. But then times changed during the 2000s when new conflicts came up. And so that segues into our final genre of music that I'll be looking at, rap music. And so 20, 2000s, Slim Shady Eminem, one of the greatest, or one of the most uh, famous rap artists, comes to light. Um, so I'd like to play an intro of his piece or song real some she which starts off like this <laughs> and so the reason I this one was shorter than many of the rest is because this kind of just repeats throughout until a little bit into the song and so you might notice that the melody and the um, rhythm are very simple but what isn't simple during this time of music is the lyrics. The lyrics took on a heavier impact during this time period. Music, I mean, music, oh, sorry, my voice cracked. Music became a form that was different from previous times. Music was once a form of entertainment, but it slowly became a form of expression. People used lyrics to talk about the injustices, the struggles in life that they face. And so music changed form during this time. And so you might notice that's how the sound of music also changed. And so through this, I hope that we were able to examine how music has changed. But not just how music has changed, why music changed this way. And it's because of perspective. People change how they look on things. And their, out, their outlook on things might or does change their art, how they express themselves. And music is one of them. And so through this, I hope the next time a song comes on the radio, something plays in the background of a commercial, or you're shopping or driving alone in the car listening to the radio in the rain. I just want you guys to think why this sounds this way. What perspectives played a role? What changed how this music sounds? And so next time you listen to a song, just want you to think, appreciate it a little bit more. Thank you. <laughs>